Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. I'm going to preach to you today on this subject, the power of life and death. I sent out a message yesterday that said, um, you know, that I was going to be teaching the first three points and then I'm going to preach the fourth. Okay. So here's what I'm saying. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to kind of let you know in advance what's happening around here. I'm setting you up for the first three. And on the fourth one, I just want you to just, just have at it. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. I promise you God is going to sweep into this room if you'll let it. It's up to us to be prepared for what he's going to do. So that's my sneaky little plan. So just be ready. When we hit to fourth, we're going to let God just move in in a big way. So you should expect that. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for what you're doing in this service today. Thank you for the mighty presence that we're feeling. Thank you, God, that every part of this service has been touched by your hand. I ask you, Lord, to prepare our hearts to receive today. Prepare me, God. Let the voice of the Lord flow through me fluidly today that your people would hear the clarion call of your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Once a small town was visited by a preacher. And as he passed by a little hut, a woman came to him and begged him to pray for her critically ill child. Since the preacher was new to the town, the, cow, the crowd gathered around him to see if he could do anything. Then the woman brought her sick child to him and she said, please pray over her. Then the man yell, a man yelled out from the crowd, do you really think your prayer is going to help her when medicine has failed? Then the preacher quickly replied to the man with a sharp tone, why don't you shut your mouth and mind your own business? Didn't expect that. Then the man became furious with these words and his face turned fiery red and he was about to say something or perhaps even hit the preacher when the preacher walked over to him and said, if words have enough power to make you so angry, may not others have the power to heal. Our words are more than just syllables and we string together. It's more than just nouns and verbs and adjectives that come together to form sentences. Our words have power. Everybody say power. I think, I think if we just, you just sat and thought about it for just a few moments, we'd realize, you know, that whole nations have been destroyed through words. Hitler came to power and nearly ruled the world through passionate speeches. Patrick Henry helped incite a revolution with the words, give me liberty or give me death. Great companies have been built because of words. People have been encouraged because of words. People have been discouraged because of what? Words, words really matter. And just to contextualize for today, the words out of your mouth matter and the words out of your thumbs matter. <laughs> Today, we're going to be looking at several verses in the book of James, and I want to give you some background on James. So James is the author, and he is the half-brother of Jesus. Same mother, different fathers. <laughs> Joseph's is, uh, Joseph is the father of James, and then well, it says the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, so the Spirit of God is the father of Jesus. And some of you guys are like different fathers. I did not know Mary got divorced and remarried. <laughs> None of that happened here, but James, he's a very prominent leader in the early church. The book of James is written to Jewish Christians, Jewish Christians that have been dispersed outside of Jer the city of Jerusalem. They fled persecution. They fled in fear. They fled for all kinds of reasons, but that's who the book is written to based on what's happening contextually in the book of James. It is some scholars say that it was written from around 45 AD to 50 AD. AD. Now, AD does not mean after death. It means Anno Domini, which is interpreted as in the year of our Lord or in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus died around 33 AD. So this book is somewhere between 12, 15, maybe 18 years post resurrection. That is right after the resurrection. This New Testament church, they are trying to be built 
You got to get the picture here. It's very important. It is a fledging church. All the, there's all kinds of chaos happening. There's a lot of infighting. There's people that don't get along with each other and they're trying to work out their differences. And there's a literal famine in the land. There's food that is difficult to get. And, and there's also great persecution that's happening all around. For reference, the book of Acts is based right in the same time period as this book. So that means we have people being killed. We have people like Peter being threatened and imprisoned with death, or threatened with death and imprisoned. And there, there's a lot of chaos that is happening in the church. They are under a lot of pressure. Everybody say pressure. Now, we don't deal with 5% of the struggles of what I've just listed there, most of us in this room, but we can certainly all identify with pressure. We can all identify with trouble. James 1 and verse 2 through 3, I want to read it with you today. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Verse three, four, you know that when faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So James is writing this book and what he's, he's really given us some practical advice on how to live a life that perseveres, how to live a life that has purpose, how to live a life that is full of fruit and somehow right in the middle of the book of James where he's talking about all this, he drops some truth bombs, some surprising wisdom on us re to, to, to regarding our words, the words that come out of our mouth. And he reveals the power of the spoken word. So let's get into what James has to say about it. I, and I, I, I thought about easing into this today and kind of just kind of, I don't know, just Slowly, slowly get in into the meat of it. But I think James, he came out swinging. I think maybe we should do the same here today. So we're going to go to James chapter 1, verse 26. But put your hard hat on, maybe some steel toe boots today, because we're going to talk about some stuff that may not be as fun. Who knows? Verse 26. If you claim to be religious, oh man, he's already started out. If, <laughs> if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself. And your religion is worthless. <laughs> James, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> you ever wonder if like James and Peter and John and, you know, Matthew and Mark and all that stuff, they were more bold because they were writing this stuff in letters and they weren't saying it face to face. <laughs> I think we're going to have it harder today because like I got to preach to you face to face and say this stuff. And then I shake your hand in the foyer. But if I can just write it in a letter, I can say a lot of stuff a little more plain. That's like, you know, people at home, they're really bold when they're typing on their computer, right? They want to say it face to face. I don't know. I mean, I think they would have been bold to us too, but it just feels like they were more bold because it was in letters. But he says, if you can't control your tongue, your religion is worthless. Your faith needs to have enough power to cause you to filter the things that come out of your mouth and the things that come out of your thumbs. In other words, as Christians, when you're facing challenging times, Something should be different about what you say. There should be a difference about the words that come out of your mouth. We should not look or talk or sound like the world. The trajectory of our lives shouldn't look like the negativity or the, the disunity or the dysfunction or the cursing or the lying of the world. There should be something different about the children of God, about what we're saying, what is coming out of our mouth. So why... Are the words that come out of my mouth so very, very important? Because number one, if you're taking notes, I'm asking you to take notes if you can. If you have something to do it, please do so. It's good for us. But number one, words determine direction. Words determine direction. Let's skip over to James chapter three, verse two. I am not going to go linear through these scriptures today. I'm going to bounce back and forth, but we're in verse number two. And I want you to look what it says. It says, indeed, we all make many mistakes. Oh, good. He's talking to all of us. Good. He's up. Thank you. I appreciate it. I feel seen right here. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Verse number three, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. Let's go to the next verse. And a small rudder 
makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. Even though the winds are strong. Even though the trial is blowing from every turn, even though the winds of your struggle are hitting you on every side, what you speak with your tongue, the rudder of your ship can determine the destiny of your vessel. Whatever you're going through, no matter what the struggle may be, no matter if it's tornado force winds are blowing against your home and your life, what you say with your tongue determines the destination of your vessel. I don't know what I got to do to get you excited here today, but I'm preaching the word, so you might want to get on board pretty quick. He's saying your words have the power to set the course of your life. I'm not proposing that, well, if you just, if you, if you just speak it, it happens. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really backing the notion of just name it and claim it and blab it and grab it. I don't know about all that. I, don't th- I think that's something that people on TV made up to get more money. <laughs> I don't know about name it and claim it and blab it and grab it, but I do know there's power in our words because here's the reality. Yeah, listen to this. I think you should write this down. You shape your words, but then your words begin to shape you. You become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Your words begin to create the world that that you live in. As if you are constantly speaking failure over the relationships in your life, then you should not be surprised whenever the relationships in your life begin to fail. And the opposite is also true. The words that you speak matter, and there's some here you grew up in such dysfunction. You grew up in environments that the glass was always half empty. You know, all you know is to be negative. It's difficult to do anything other than to speak down to a situation, but if you allow God to do a work in your life and you'll be intentional about changing the words that you speak, you can change your direction. Where you are right now. Think about it. Where I'm at right now in my life, my family, where I'm at right now, has a lot to do with the words that you have spoken along the way. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm making a case because some of y'all are like, I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see where he goes with this. I'm not sure I'm on board yet, but I think so. I'll prove it with the word. It's okay. It's a fact. Where you are right now is a lot to do with the things that you've spoken in the past. And just like a bit can turn a whole animal and a rudder can turn a whole ship, your words have been turning your life and giving you direction up until now. And I've, I've watched so many that are consistently struggling because they can't seem to stop speaking failure rather than faith. They're speaking their trauma rather than their testimony. For evil or for good, for darkness or for light, whether fact or fiction, truth or error, whatever I say, what has been said to me, what has been said about me, and God forbid what's being said around me can morph from being just a mere sound to become my circumstance. So words can go from just a conversation to become the context of my life. Words determine direction. Our next point, number two, words reveal the heart. Everybody say, words reveal my heart. Somebody's like, well, I mean, that isn't what I meant to say. You know, I mean, it just slipped out. You may have not have meant for it to come out, but it was in there. This is what James says in chapter 3, verse 9 through 12. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Get in your car this afternoon, start heading home. Somebody cuts you off. Something a little unholy comes out of your mouth. Uh Uh-oh. I just want you to know that you just said something hateful to a person that was made in the image of God. The image of the one that you just left the church worshiping. I knew that wouldn't go over very well at all. I I figured everybody's just going to sit quiet. 
cursing or speaking hateful words to the one that God created in his image. Number 10, verse 10. And so blessings and cursings come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Verse 11, does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Verse 12, does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. In other words, if you're a child of God, both shouldn't be coming out of the same mouth. What's in us comes out of us. And the real problem isn't our tongue. It's our heart. He says what's in us comes out of us. So, so we end up apologizing, saying, that wasn't really me. I was hungry. <laughs> that wasn't really me. I was frustrated from a long day at work. That wasn't really me. I don't know. That wasn't really me. Well, that might not have been the better you that you wanted to be, but the lesser you showed up. Because what comes out of here started in here. And that's why my words matter. And I'm making a case here for you today because words are the revealer of what's really going on inside of me. I feel like it's necessary to clarify just in case I, I, I misunderstood here today. If you're trying to say a word and you get tongue tied and something else comes out that wasn't right, that's one thing. OK, I think everybody here knows what I'm talking about when you just say something you're not supposed to say or when you just got twisted up and something accidentally happens there. I do think there's a difference. But Psalms 19 and 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What's that telling us? It's saying the words out of my mouth are coming from what my heart meditates on. It's not just something that just happened and all of a sudden it got in my, I don't know how that got in there. No, it comes from what my heart meditates on. It comes from what I chew on. So pastor, what do I need to do? Chew on something new. <laughs> Change what you chew on. Somebody needs to say, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to have divisive words come out of my mouth because I'm going to I'm going to not just sit there and meditate on the person that did this or that to me. I'm not going to have to worry about that stuff coming out of my mouth because I'm not going to sit there and focus on it and meditate on it day and night. Well, what, <laughs> I, I, uh, what if somebody hold on? I really think about this for a second. What if somebody came up to you? And they told you, they like, I know exactly what you're thinking. I know exactly what you think about me. I know what you were saying. I know, I know your thoughts. I know how you feel about me. All this stuff. I know what you would do. I feel like most people in this room would do the same as me here. You just would be like, like, no, -uh. you don't get to tell me what I'm thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. You don't know me. can't tell me I'm thinking this or I'm feeling this or I know that you know you know this about me and all that other stuff you you know that right everybody here would be like you don't get to tell me what I'm thinking uh oh I set you up <laughs> yet we create scenarios in our mind that we somehow know exactly what others are thinking we know exactly what they think about us that we know exactly what how they feel about this we know exactly what they're saying behind closed doors about us and we get there and we meditate on it and we chew on it i know they're thinking this they didn't shake my hand i know what that means and here we go and just going into it and into it and into it not giving them the benefit of the doubt for nothing we don't know what they're going through just like they don't know what you're going through we don't know what's going through their mind just like they don't know what's going through our mind there's so much we don't know so we assume and we meditate and we chew and we chew and it gets into our heart and it transfers to our mouth. We have to decide in these times that I'm not going to ruminate in my imaginations. I'm going to be a mature adult and I'm going to go straight to them and I'm not going to allow the meditations in my mind to fester. I'm going to say that we're going to have this conversation because I don't want the things coming out of my mouth that are in my heart. I don't want anything in my heart that's not right. I'm not going to let bitterness in there. I'm not going to let ne negativity in there. I'm not going to let hatefulness in there. I'm not going to let pride in my heart because it's going to come out of my mouth because the meditations of my heart become words in my mouth. So God, 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you because if that's the case, then the words that come out of what's in here will be pleasing to him and it will speak positivity. It will speak life into your situation. Luke 6 and 45 says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. Okay. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Another version says for the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. speaketh. So I, I, I thought it was way down deep in there somewhere. I thought it was way down. I don't know where in the world that came from. When we're in challenging times and the, and the pressure is on and we're going through life and something, some situation, somebody rubs up against you the wrong way, somebody bumps into you. Oh, man. Oh, look what happened. I don't, I mean, what happened there? Well, something spilled over. The reality is it wasn't the bottom that spilled over. It was what's at the surface that spilled over. And somehow in our lives, when stuff comes out of us, out of nowhere, we start to say, oh, that was, oh boy, where was that? That was way down in there somewhere. No, that's not the way it was. It's saying whatever, it's from whatever your heart is full of. It's from the surface that's at the top. And that's what happens many times is it just comes out because somehow we think we've got it buried. We think we have it covered, but our mouth is the revealer of what was in our heart. And so when situations come and they bump up against us and we spill over, God's saying that's my way of saying you've got stuff in your heart that you think is buried but it's truly on the surface we don't walk around going you know I I don't know where that came from that wasn't me no it was it was the top of me it was right there on the surface and we didn't realize it this whole time but Luke is saying he's saying hey listen what comes out of me is what I've stored up. An evil man brings the evil things out of the evil stored into his heart. So what's it, what he's saying here is, if I've stored up things that aren't pleasing to God, that's what's going to come out. If I've got it stored up and it's not pleasing to God, you won't be able to hide it forever. If I'm storing up good things, then good things are going to come out. Uh, that's like Luke Titus says, he says, to the pure, all things are pure. So if we're living a pure life, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about whether or not somebody's going to bump into us and something slips out here or there. No, we just watch what goes in. We protect our heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Above all else. I love this verse because he could have said anything. He said he could have said, above all else, worship. Above all else, memorize the word of God. Above all else, pray. All very, very, very important, very critical things. But Solomon says this, above all else, guard your heart. Why? And this is it. This is what I've been trying to say. It seems extreme because if you guard your heart, you're going to control your tongue, which has the power of life and death. Which brings me to number three. Number three, words have the power of death. Okay? So let's continue to read in James chapter three. Here is verse number five. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. A tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. In verse six, and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. Man, James, this is intense. It is a whole world of wickedness. The tongue pff, corrupting your entire body and it can set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. <laughs> what are you trying to get us to see, James? James. He's trying to get us to see that our words can destroy the very things we hold dear. 
Now, I'm not just saying some neat little TED talk up here today. It's not just some interesting little subject that we can talk about. This is life changing. This can transform your life from top to bottom, upside down and out. I want you to think about it. How many dreams have been crushed because of words? How many relationships have been injured because of words? How many friendships have faded? How many opportunities have been lost because of careless words? How many bridges have been burned because of words? How many have lost sleep over words that you've replayed in your mind? Why? Because words can destroy. They have the power of death. We have to be careful what we say. Pastor, does that mean I need to walk around with a muzzle on my mouth all the time? I mean, maybe sometimes that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Says, you know, some may be more than others. <laughs> Just know we're going to hand out muzzles on the way out today. <laughs> because we live in a culture that says, you know, like, no, nobody's going to tell me what I can't say and what I can't say. Nobody's going to muzzle me. Nobody's going to, no, nobody's going to stop what I have to say. I got something I need to say. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I always want to tell somebody that says, I got to give them a piece of my mind. I'd be like, no, you need all of that. <laughs> You're already struggling a little bit. Okay. So you need to keep that, keep it intact. I don't need it. <laughs> keep it how many of you know that the right words spoken by the right person can melt your heart but how many know the wrong words spoken by the right person can crush your heart why because words have the power to destroy James says this tongue it can set a forest on fire it can cause fire to run through your home. It can cause a fire to run through your work. It can cause a fire to run through your marriage. It can cause a fire to run through your friendships. Why? Because words have the power of death. All right. We have reached point number four. Somebody needs to start stretching. Y'all need to stretch. You want me to get ready? I want you to get, but some of you need to, I think most everyone needs to just kind of scoop to the edge of your seat just a little bit because something's about to happen in the Holy Ghost here. I'm not talking about hype. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost is going to move in. I'm believing that somebody is going to receive a word in the next few minutes. The Holy Ghost is going to speak to you. Somebody is going to be loose. There's going to be transformation that's going to happen. Curses that have been spoken over you are going to break in Jesus name. Angels, it's time to do what you were sent here to do. Woo! I'm ready. Number four. Words have the power of life. Somebody shout life. I could go in many different directions with this point. I felt there was a lot of places I could go with it. This is, this is the where the Holy Ghost led me to go. And how many of you know that everything we've been talking about today begins within? That's right. It begins within. It kind of starts on the inside, if you know what I'm saying. And what, what with that said, have you ever noticed how sometimes it's easier to speak life to someone else than it is to the mirror? I want you to receive what the Lord's going to do here in the next few moments. Prepare your heart. But some of you have been beat up. Some of you have been broken. Some of your minds replay over and over the words of rejection that's been spoken over you. Words that cut. Words that were spoken in anger. Words that some, from someone you trusted. And you've had every reason told to you why you'll never be free. You've heard every reason why you'll always be the way you are. You've heard every reason why you'll never be used by God. I've come to tell you loud and clear today that it is never the will of God for you to live bound by the words of death that has been spoken over you. And some of you have lived so long with that lie in your mind, you've begun to doubt the very thing that God has spoken to you, causing to you to doubt yourself, causing you to doubt God's promises. And some of you have begun to wonder whether or not what you say or do ever matters. But listen, Porva, those of you that have been born again of the water and of the Spirit, 
You need to be reminded that galaxies were formed by the spoken word of God. And God said, let there be light. The very same spirit that spoke the world into existence, robed himself in flesh, was born of a virgin, died on a cross, and resurrected himself after three days. But get this, Romans 8 and 11, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The very same power that spoke the stars into place is alive in you. The mountains were formed with just a word from the mouth of God and that very same God is alive in you. I'm here to tell you there is power in your words just like there was power in the words of Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning God and then he began to speak life into existence. Just like there was power on that boat when Jesus spoke three words to the storm. Peace, be still. There's life on the tip of your tongue here this morning. It's time that someone put your shoulders back. You look at yourself in the mirror and you say with boldness, I don't live by fear, but I live by faith. My feet are on solid ground. No weapon formed against me is going to pro prosper. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Thanks be to God which causes me to always triumph. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He will be with me always. Even till the end of the world, I may be troubled on every side, but not distressed. I may be perplexed, but not in despair. I may be persecuted, and but not forsaken. I may be cast down but not destroyed I'm asking and I'm gonna receive I'm knocking and the door is gonna be open I'm seeking and I'm gonna find I'm saying somebody needs to speak to the mirror this morning I'm speaking what the Word of God says about you I'm speaking life listen listen your pastor your pastor is sick and tired of the voice of the enemy prevailing over the people of God. I'm sick and tired of God's amazing, precious people hearing the voice of the enemy and being discouraged, being downtrodden, believing what the enemy is saying rather than believing the word of God. I'm here to tell you that is the voice of the accuser. And the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So how do we have victory? <laughs> Ooh, I might explode. How do we have victory over the voices of the accuser? John said, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I'm coming to tell you today that the voice of anxiety, the voice of rejection, the voice of guilt and shame, they all got to go when the accuser goes. You and I are lifted up when the accuser is cast down. He overcame them. We overcome him by the word of our testimony. I'm here to tell you that irrespective of what I have may been going through. When I'm weak, I'm going to say I'm strong. No matter what I'm going through, when I'm weak, I'm going to say I'm strong. When I'm sick, I'm going to say with his stripes, I am healed. When I'm fearful, I'm going to say the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. When I'm weary, I'm going to say God is my refuge and strength. When I'm in a mess, I'm going to say he is my very present help in the time of trouble. When I'm afflicted, I'm going to say many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth them all. When I'm overwhelmed, I'm going to say lead me to a rock that is higher than I. When I'm attacked, I'm going to say if God be for me, then who can be against me? 
when I walk through the fire, I'm going to say, I shall not be burned. If my children are lost or if they've lost their way, I'm going to say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters to the ends of the earth. And when I'm dying, I'm going to say, I know my Redeemer lives. Your words have the power of life this morning. I want everybody that's able, I need you to stand and I want you to start making your way to this altar. Somebody needs to imagine that there's a mirror up here and you need to begin to speak life to your circumstance. You need to begin to speak boldness to your circumstance. Death was spoken over your marriage, but today you're going to speak life. Death was spoken over your children, but today you're going to speak life. Death was spoken in your diagnosis, but today you're going to speak life. Begin to proclaim. Begin to say it. This is who I am. This is who I will be. Come.